Merci d'être ici aujourd'hui, tout le monde. C'est un grand plaisir pour moi de présenter un Conseil des ministres euh, qui ressemble énormément au Canada. Uh, it's an incredible pleasure for me to be here today uh, before you to present uh, to Canada uh, a cabinet that looks like Canada. Uh, we, have, we have an awful lot of work to do uh, in the coming uh, weeks, months and years. Uh, but I know that Canadians expected us uh, to come together and put forward a team that is going to be able to deliver on the change on the ambitious plan for this country that the Liberal Party ran on, and that's exactly what we are going to deliver. Les Canadiens ont eu de grandes attentes uh, pour nous, et je suis très content de démontrer que nous avons l'équipe extraordinaire pour livrer uh, sur les valeurs uh, et uh, le plan que les Canadiens s'attendent de ce gouvernement. Hi, Julie Van Dusen, CBC. Um, we've seen, congratulations, first of all, Thank you. and we've seen some uh, visible changes in your approach, but could you just explain to us, if you had a message to Canadians, what kind of government are you hoping to offer them? How will it be different? Well, I think one of the first things is that we're a government uh, that wants to earn Canadians' trust by demonstrating that we trust Canadians. Uh, openness and transparency uh, isn't just about trust, though. It's also very much uh, about better policy making, uh, better decisions. When uh, media can do their jobs of holding us to account and asking tough questions, uh, when uh, disclosure and access to information is just the way uh, Parliament behaves, uh, when uh, open data uh, and uh, evidence-based policy is at the heart of policy making and governance decisions, uh, you get the kind of government that Canadians expect and deserve, and that's what we're going to be working very, very hard to deliver. And a, a second quick question. Um, you're making history today in the sense that you're the first Canadian Prime Minister whose father was a Prime Minister, and many people in the crowd mentioned your father, and I'm just wondering, do you have any thoughts today to share with us? Uh, obviously, I, I think of uh, my father and uh, how uh, pleased he must be uh, that uh, Canada so firmly came together around an ambitious vision for the country uh, that we presented. But my thoughts today, uh, sorry Dad, aren't mostly on him, they're very much on my own kids uh, and on the kids across this country that we are going to work very, very hard to ensure they have a better future. Uh, I am forward-looking and that's what we're going to do. First of all, um, your cabinet, you said, looks a lot like Canada, and I understand one of the priorities for you was to have a cabinet that was gender balanced. Why was that so important to you? Because it's 2015. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians uh, elected extraordinary members of parliament from across the country, uh, and I am glad uh, to have been able to highlight uh, a few of them uh, in this cabinet here with me today. Uh, however, there are an awful lot of extraordinary Canadians uh, who uh, are not uh, in this cabinet behind me who are also uh, going to be strong voices for their community and their country. Uh, because one of the things that I am committed to is ensuring uh, that all parliamentarians, all uh, 307 of them who aren't uh, here with us today, uh, are uh, able to be strong voices for their communities, uh, to push their issues, and to make sure that the diversity that makes this Canada, this country, so strong uh, is the diversity that, of views that carry us forward. Uh, last week you were asked uh, for an update on um, resettling the 25,000 Syrian refugees that you promised. You said last week that you would have more to say after you were sworn in. Well, you've been sworn in. <laughs> Can you give us an update on uh, what you're doing to get 25,000 refugees here to Canada? Well, I just took a big step towards it by appointing the kind of cabinet that's going to get things done. Uh, this is going to be uh, a period of slight adjustment for uh, a number of people in the political world in Canada uh, because government by cabinet uh, is back. Uh, we are going to sit down uh, around the cabinet table 
uh, and talk about uh, the solutions that need to put forward, what is in the best interests of Canadians, uh, and how we're going to deliver uh, on the promises that Canadians quite rightly expect us to keep. We're going to do it responsibly and, po and properly, uh, but we are going to keep the promises we made to Canadians to offer them the kind of country uh, that we know we deserve. Li Mingzhou, uh, NTD TV. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, you're, ha you're heading to APEC meeting and will meet with Asian leaders, including Chinese leaders. Um, as Canada does trade with China, we also know there's a grave human rights uh, concerns in that country. Uh, for example, the recent arrest of the um, human rights lawyers, uh, the torture and killing of Falun Gong practitioners, and the list goes on. Um, I want to ask you, are you going to stand up for Canadian values um, um, in raising the human rights issue with the Chinese counterpart and show Canadians that uh, in doing trade, we're not going to sacrifice human Canadi rights? Canadians expect uh, of their government uh, to engage in protecting Canada's national interests in a positive and constructive way on the world stage. And yes, that means promoting our values and standing up for human rights. And it also means ensuring uh, that we can be a productive voice on the world stage to improve relations, to improve economic growth and opportunity for all, uh, but also to have frank and open conversations with our friends and trading partners. And Canada will continue always uh, to be a strong and positive voice on the world stage, uh, building the kind of future, uh, not just for Canadians, but for everyone on this planet uh, that we know uh, people expect. Do you think, do you think uh, in Canada's foreign po policy with China, Canada can advance a human rights agenda to help that country? Uh, absolutely. I think Canada has uh, an awful lot to offer to many countries around the world, uh, whether it's uh, better governance, better, whether it's the idea that diversity is a source of strength, not a source of weakness. Uh, there is a positive engagement uh, firmly based on our values uh, that we know are not just Canadian values, but in, uh, in most cases are universally shared values across the world, uh, that we have work to do and we will do that work. Daniel Thibault, Radio-Canada. Monsieur Trudeau, euh, avec vos ministres derrière vous, avec cette cérémonie ce matin qui fait de vous maintenant un nouveau gouvernement, quel genre de message vous voulez envoyer aux Canadiens? Qu'est-ce que vous voudriez qu'ils retiennent de ce qui est derrière vous aujourd'hui? D'abord, qu'on forme un gouvernement euh, qui met la confiance au centre de ses actions. Euh, nous voulons mériter la confiance des Canadiens et pour cela, nous allons démontrer que nous avons confiance dans les Canadiens d'être ouvert et transparent dans nos actions, euh, de faire des politiques basées sur les données, sur les faits, euh, de comprendre qu'on se doit d'être redevable devant les médias, euh, devant les Canadiens à tout bout de champ. Euh, c'est une priorité pour moi et je pense que c'est le changement euh, que les Canadiens ont demandé dans ces élections. Maintenant, vous allez avoir votre première rencontre du Conseil des ministres cet après-midi. Vous allez établir, je présume, une série de priorités. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez? Quelles sont vos priorités? Qu'est-ce que vous voulez accomplir d'ici le 31 décembre 2015? Bien, une, des, une des premières discussions qu'on va avoir, ça va être sur le retour du Parlement. Euh, moi, j'aimerais ai, bien qu'on ramène le Parlement euh, dans les premières journées du mois de décembre, euh, mais ce sera une discussion que nous allons avoir en cabinet pour confirmer la date. Euh, mais comme j'ai dit tout au long de la campagne, une de nos premières priorités, euh, notre première priorité, va être de baisser les impôts pour la classe moyenne en demandant aux mieux nantis, aux 1 des plus riches, d'en faire un petit peu plus. Et c'est ce que nous allons présenter comme premier projet de loi. Mr. Trudeau, Brian Fraser, on behalf of CKDJ 107.9. And it's, it's no secret that... Uh, a lot of students around the country go into tremendous amounts of debt coming out of their post-secondary education. I was wondering, now that you've been sworn in, if you have any plans to maybe reduce the load that those students have to bear. Well, uh, we know uh, that the future of our country uh, is deeply uh, wrapped up in a positive future for our young people. Uh, 
access to post-secondary education is going to be essential for economic growth in this country and that's why we put forward a strong plan uh, to increase the Canada student uh, grants uh, and loan system to make sure uh, that young people have better access to post-secondary education uh, including uh, for Indigenous Canadians uh, who see tremendous barriers uh, but also uh, we have uh, made a commitment uh, that loans don't need to be paid back by students until such a time as they are making $25,000 a year uh, in salary and revenue. Uh, that's the kind of thing that pushes off uh, the kinds of debts that are crippling our young people. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Mélanie Marquis de la Presse canadienne. Est-ce que ça vous étonne d'entendre des gens reprocher que vous ayez en quelque sorte écarté des hommes pour atteindre la parité au, au cabinet? Vous savez, on est en 2015 aujourd'hui. Je crois que d'avoir un, un cabinet qui est le reflet du Canada dans toute sa magnifique diversité, ça a été une priorité pour moi. Mais comme vous savez aussi, euh, les Canadiens ont envoyé à la Chambre des communes des gens extraordinaires pour le Parti libéral euh, et nous reconnaissons que euh, tous les parlementaires vont avoir un rôle important à jouer pour s'assurer que euh, les vues, les préoccupations, les priorités des Canadiens soient bien entendues dans ce Parlement, soient bien écoutées par ce gouvernement et euh, qu'on livre le genre de gouvernement dont les Canadiens euh, s'attendent. Go ahead, Justin. Uh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, you're, in a couple of weeks, you'll be heading to Paris, where you're going to be asked to commit to serious uh, goals on reducing carbon emissions here in Canada, but you've not committed to any sort of plan on the federal level to do so. You said you're going to get the provinces on board. Optimistically, do you think that's even possible to actually get the provinces to adapt a plan that's going to be enough to meet the uh, pretty serious targets that you're going to be asked to commit to? Canadians uh, expect uh, their government to be responsible around climate change and addressing the uh, impacts of the environment that we are facing around the world right now. Canada is going to be a strong and positive actor uh, on the world stage, including uh, in Paris at COP21. Uh, that's why we have uh, a very strong uh, uh, minister, not just of the environment, but minister of the environment and climate change, uh, who will be at the heart of this uh, uh, this discussion, and she's of course uh, an Ottawa girl. Uh, we can see uh, uh, see the support for her here. Uh, but the fact is that we have an amazing team of strong cabinet members uh, who will uh, lean in with the kind of engagement both with the provinces uh, and municipalities uh, and. Uh, countries around the world to demonstrate that Canada is doing its part to address climate change impacts. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you very, very much.